YouTube has come under a lot of fire over their policies, especially um, when it came down to a lot of pedophilia that was going on and also what they consider as hate speech. Now, there is a thin line on how you can really enforce that, to be honest with you, you know. Number one, it's a hate speech policy. It's not a law. You know, as far as I know, the law of the land is still freedom of speech. When you start talking hate speech, then you're pretty much Xing out freedom of speech altogether. And, you know, and, and you can't play both sides of the fence. And that's what a lot of people do. In one instance, I want my freedom of speech. Then in the next instance, if I don't like what you're saying, it's hate speech. You need to go. You you can't play both sides of the fence. Either we all are going to have freedom of speech up in here or shut the hell up. Seriously, you know, but we got a lot of fence riders when it comes down to freedom of speech and what they want. It, it's all about what they want to hear and don't want to hear. And that is not how it works. You know, I may not agree with everything that I hear from people, but they have the right to say it. But we have a lot of people out here on YouTube when they don't like what you're saying, they want to find ways to shut you down or come and subscribe to you knowing they're only trying to nitpick for something so they can go complain about it because they need to shut you up. But that same person that's doing that to you is the one notorious for running their mouth about their freedom of speech. You know, too many fence riders. And we certainly don't need that. So this is a recent interview that was done on CNN Business June 20th, 2019, why Washington regulators and lawmakers are turning their attention to YouTube. Now, I saw an article probably about a week ago that said YouTube was under federal investigation for some of the content that's on here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm going to let you listen to the CEO of Google in this interview, in his own words. Let's talk about the spread of disinformation and hate on YouTube from anti-Semitism to harassment of LGBTQ individuals, conspiracy theory videos about the Parkland shooting or, or Sandy Hook. I mean, fundamentally, Sundar, where, where do you draw the line with YouTube between hate and free speech? You know, it's a, it's a line we, you know, we work hard to get right. And, you know, and, and every few years we feel the need to evolve them because we see changes in how the platform is getting used. Just last week, we had significant revisions to our uh, hate speech policy. At YouTube, we are very focused on removing harmful content and reducing the spread of what we think of as borderline content. Just last quarter, we removed over 9 million videos. And, and so it's an ongoing process, but there's more we need to do, and we acknowledge that. And you did lay out many new ground rules for YouTube just about a week ago. But even a week after doing that, CNN still found that there were white supremacists, white nationalist videos up from... Uh, Richard Spencer and KKK leader David Duke, you've hired thousands of individuals to handle this. And I just wonder if, Sundar, you, you believe that the predicament is so big that this is evidence that there will never be enough humans to take all of these videos down. It is a challenging problem. Uh, even when we announced new policies last week, it will take us some time to go back through our corpus 
and actually enforce it. So there's there's a time gap there. But we've gotten much better at using a combination of machines and uh, and humans. So it's one of those things in which, let's say we are getting it right over 99% of the time, you'll still be able to find examples. Uh, you know, our goal is to take that to a very, very small percentage, well below 1%, which is what we are working but it, on. But it sounds like you're, you're saying it'll never be 100%. I think any large-scale systems, uh, you know, it's tough. You know, think about credit card transactions. There's some fraud in the system. So anything when you run at that scale, you know, you, you know we, we have to think about percentages. Today in search, we aim to be 99.99 percentages right. And I hear you on credit card fraud, and I understand that, but violence can erupt from this, right? Can AI solve this? Can tech solve this? Uh, you know, I, I am confident we can make significant progress. But I do think on areas where we can agree on, enforcement will get better uh, with the help of technology. So when YouTube announced these new rules that it would take down these videos, that included taking down all of those horrible conspiracy theory videos denying the Sandy Hook massacre, but an attorney representing 10 of the families who have family members who were killed in that said that it's, it's too late to undo the harm and talked about the undue harassment and threats that they had sustained. I just wonder why it took seven years to realize that those videos shouldn't be up and, and ads shouldn't be running next to those videos. You know, I mean, it's heartbreaking for sure. And, you know, all of us, uh, you know, would look back and, you know, we, we wish we had gotten to the problems uh, sooner than we did. And, you know, there's an acknowledgement we didn't get it right. But I think we became aware collectively of some of the pitfalls here. And, you know, since then we've been working hard. We have changed our priorities. Uh, and, and, you know, we have put in a lot of effort there and we'll continue to do that. Well, you heard what he said. Ladies and gentlemen, I think <clears throat> YouTube got some big problems. I think when you put policies in place and you cherry pick the way policies are given out, that's you know, that's why they run into so many problems. You will have a hate speech policy, but the problem is there are so many violations on YouTube. It's really hard for them to clean it up. Number two, I think the people running it, have a lot to do with most of these problems that are going on. You know, I know the CEO of YouTube is a very unlikable person. I, I've seen so many videos and even out on Twitter, this woman gets so many damn thumbs down. People are just not happy with her performance and she's been there long enough if YouTube was going to turn around, I think we would have seen it by now. I, I just don't think she can do it. That's my opinion. I don't think she can do it. But ladies and gentlemen, please tell me what you think about this interview. Me, I, I prefer the freedom of speech. And I don't think that should be taken away from people. But that's me. You know, that's how I stand as far as speech is concerned. But the problem is, I don't know, it's just so millions of violations out on YouTube. You can virtually <laughs> drag them on this whole thing if you wanted to. Okay, so you take these people off. Is it going to resolve what's wrong on YouTube? No, you would have to, <laughs> you would have to do a complete overhaul, but <clears throat> the reason why their policies don't work is because they don't enforce the policies across the board like they really should. It's, you know, it's almost like a random thing uh, about who they pick and choose and who they don't. And sometimes I look at some of these people out here and I'm like, okay, you pick this person, but why? You know, <laughs> why? 
it's never going to make sense, ladies and gentlemen, until they come up with a policy, enforce it, and stand firm on it. Other than that, none of the things that they are doing is going to really cut down on too much of nothing. And as you can see, even after the new hate speech policy that they came out with, more, more like revisions, nothing has changed. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.